Torterra has finally broken out of its shell and it now has the move Shell Smash. Shell Smash is one of the greatest moves of all time with a massive 2 times boost to attack, special attack, and speed. That's enough to turn any Pokemon into a big threat who can sweep an entire team. However, it appears that Pokemon is aware of how broken the move can be and historically it's only been given to mediocre to bad Pokemon. For example, Blastoise only got Shell Smash in Generation 8 after Mega Evolutions were removed. Just imagine how powerful Shell Smash Mega Blastoise would have been. In Smogon's tiering system for the 6v6 format, the only time we've seen a Shell Smash Pokemon in the top tier is Shell Smash Cloyster back in Generation 5. Most Shell Smash Pokemon end up becoming mid or low tier Pokemon, like Poltergeist hanging around RU, the third tier in Generation 8. These Pokemon are not necessarily bad, it's just that they don't get used a lot. So the question is, will Torterra break the trend and become one of the few good Shell Smash Pokemon, or will it just be another low tier bully, like Barbarical or Caracosta before it? But first, a word from our sponsor. This video is sponsored by the military online game War Thunder. War Thunder is the most comprehensive vehicle combat game ever made. You can play PvP with more than 2,000 tanks, planes, helicopters, and ships. That's what I like most about the game. They have vehicles from the last 100 years of development from the 1920s until now. On top of that, there's in-depth customization for these vehicles like camouflage, historical markings, and 3D decorations. And new to War Thunder, they've actually added anime customizations like skins, voice mod packs, and anime-themed vehicles like the real-life Japanese Age 15 helicopter, Kisarazu. Every vehicle is incredibly detailed and modeled down to their individual components, offering an impressive combat experience. These details are graphics and are also in 4K resolution with authentic sound effects and music. There's no extra pilot hardware necessary and the game is free to play on PC, Xbox Series X and S, PlayStation 5, and earlier consoles. So play War Thunder for free right now, and if you register now, there's a large free bonus pack too with multiple premium vehicles, boosters, and more. They've also added 3D Dakamakuras to War Thunder that can be placed anywhere on your tank and can only be obtained via my link. Torterra has a decidedly average build. The main standout is its 95 by 105 physical bulk, which is effective enough at tanking hits, which is of great importance for a Shell Smash Pokemon. It can leverage its physical bulk to find the right opportunity to go for a Shell Smash win. 109 attack on its own is slightly above average, and everything else is honestly mediocre in the context of a metagame like OU. Torterra's abilities are also relatively useless, although I guess you can be happy that you can't get critical hit, or maybe you can end up in overgrow positions. But overall, it's not a very impactful ability. Grass plus ground is a good offensive typing because ground covers fire and steel, which would otherwise wall grass. The stab combo doesn't beat flying though, so it's not a great combination, just a good one. Defensively, ground is all right, but grass is poor, and that's especially bad on a slow Pokemon because it means it can get hit super effectively before it has a chance. It has four weaknesses and three resistances or immunities, so I wouldn't call it terrible, just average, maybe below average. And if you think I'm characterizing Torterra pretty negatively, it's because I am. Before Shell Smash, Torterra was not a good Pokemon in the modern era. It was a second tier Pokemon in its debut generation, but quickly fell to the bottom tiers in the following generations where it's been there ever since. Terrible would be an accurate way to describe Torterra. But obviously, everything's changed with Shell Smash. Shell Smash can make a Pokemon great. There are two main moves that you're going to see, White Herb and Loaded Dice. White Herb is a more traditional idea. You use your strong power moves and remove the negative effects of the Shell Smash with your White Herb. New to Generation 9, Torterra has Headlong Rush, which forms a nasty attacking combo with Wood Hammer, and then you have Stone Edge to hit Flying-type Pokemon. However, the recoil of Woodhammer can be a problem, and there are situations where you end up fainting from recoil alone. If you're scared of that, then you can use the Bullet Seed Rock Blast Loaded Dice moveset. The main selling point is that you now have a strong Grass-type move without recoil damage, and Rock Blast is slightly more reliable than Stone Edge. The main problem is that you keep your minus one defense and special defense which is relevant for priority moves and if you're setting up on a slower Pokemon. There's also the issue of becoming incredibly vulnerable to knockoff because your item is where you derive most of your power from. Either form is fine, you just have to be aware of the advantages and disadvantages of each form. Just like any setup sweeper, Torterra is a massive benefactor of terrestrialization. 
The obvious standout is Terra Rock, because Rock resists fire and flying and also boosts your third attacking move. Terra Ground is cool too to improve your headlong rush and lose your poor grass typing, and a generic defensive typing like Water works well too. Terra Fire Terra Blast is probably the most interesting idea because it lets you get past Corviknight, who we'll talk about later, but it does come with a disadvantage of not having a rock type move to hit flying type Pokemon and becoming slightly reliant on terrestrialization. Torterra is relatively tanky for a Shell Smash Pokemon and it should be able to get off one smash per game. Furthermore, Torterra does not exist in a vacuum and will often be paired with teammates. Torterra will often be paired with Aurora Veil support or with Pokemon like Memento. But all that being said, we still haven't answered the most important question, is Torterra actually good? The first thing you look at for a Shell Smash Pokemon is its speed tier. There's no point in spending all the effort to set up when you're just going to get outsped anyway. Conveniently, Adamant Nature Torterra actually outspeeds Dragapult by one point. This is noteworthy because Dragapult is the fastest relevant natural Pokemon and it's a typical benchmark for speed. That's good. Unfortunately though, a lot of Scarf Pokemon do outspeed Torterra. Even with a Jolly Nature, Pokemon like Scarf and Amorous, Speed Boosting Walking Wake, or Booster Energy Iron Valiant or Sandy Shocks do get the jump on Torterra. Iron Valiant in particular is relevant because it has such a high usage rate and Booster Speed is its most common moveset. So Torterra's speed tier is good, but not great. Even if a team gives up the smash to Torterra, it's very likely that they're going to have ways to outspeed it anyway. The comparison to Cloyster is very informative here. Cloyster has had several instances of being OU relevant, but the difference is that Cloyster is so naturally fast that after a Shell Smash it often outspeeds many Choice Scarf Pokemon and that gave it the potential to be devastating. Torterra doesn't do that. Then you look at the Pokemon that can take on Torterra defensively. Unaware Pokemon are the go-to method to beat setup sweeping Pokemon and Torterra benefits from having a natural type advantage versus the best unaware Pokemon Dondozo. Terra, Dondozo, and unaware Clefable do beat Torterra, but having an initial type advantage versus Dondozo is nice to have. But there are Pokemon that Torterra cannot break depending on the moveset, like Corviknight or Multiscale Dragonite. And very unfortunately for Torterra, Air Balloon is a common item on Golden Go. Honestly, the list isn't extremely long and Torterra could put itself in position to break through. But then you run into another issue, priority moves and recoil. Torterra's Woodhammer is phenomenal, but too often you end up taking so much self-recoil that you either faint outright or put yourself in range of a move like King Gambit's Sucker Punch. Headlong Rush lowers your defense too, and in practice Torterra does not often breeze through for an easy win. Torterra is tanky, so it can take on hits even after getting debuffed, but remember, Torterra will often take damage while setting up the Shell Smash 2, and when you add that to recoil plus defense drops plus priority, Torterra can struggle. Then you compare it to other setup options like Trailblaze Sword Stance Ogre Pond or Great Tusk with Bulk Up. Ogre Pond doesn't have the immediate boom of a Shell Smash, but Trailblaze Ogre Pond is faster and Ogre Pond is a generally more useful Pokemon. Booster Energy Speed Great Tusk with Bulk Up again doesn't have the immediate boom of Shell Smash, but you get a great Pokemon overall who can still try and go for a setup sweep. The concept of opportunity cost comes into play. Even if you really want a setup sweeper, can you be sure that Torterra really is the best option for your team? Unfortunately, for these reasons, Torterra is not an OU caliber Pokemon. Its speed tier means that it's realistic for Pokemon to outspeed it, there are relevant Pokemon it cannot break, and even if everything goes well, it has to contend with its own recoil. There are matchups where it can do well, maybe your opponent doesn't have a lot of speed and you can fool them with a Terra Fire Blast into their Air Balloon Golden Go. But overall, it's not very consistent and is probably relegated to being a cheese option on a Hyper Offense team. But can it be good in the lower tiers? Looking specifically at the second tier, I'm skeptical it will do well in UU. There's Pokemon like Breloom, Hydreigon, Chestnut, Grassy Glide, Rillaboom, First Impression, Low Kicks, Terra Unaware, Skeledurge, the list goes on and on. Realistically, the first tier where Torterra is going to have a chance of being good is RU, the third tier. There's no doubt that if Torterra goes down to the lower end of the spectrum, it will be excellent. When its speed tier is better, when there are even fewer Pokemon that can take it on, Torterra will thrive. Torterra is not an OU caliber Pokemon. It's not elite. But going from a complete trash Pokemon to maybe a third or fourth tier Pokemon is pretty cool. And overall, I like the buffs that Torterra has gotten. What do you think? Let me know down in the comment section below. Don't forget to play War Thunder and claim your bonus pack available for PC and console players, which includes a 3D Dakumakura.
My link below gives you 7 days of a premium account, 100,000 silver lions, and a booster to speed up progress even further. So what are you waiting for? Play War Thunder today.